So good morning, everyone. Our topic for today is all about the selection of the civil engineer. So my name is Ham Sobrikari Siga and I am your reporter, assigned reporter for today's topic. So before we are going to dwell more with the topic, which is the selection of the civil engineer, let me hand you an example on how important it is to have the basis on the selecting of the civil engineer of a certain project or assignment. So set for example, in the Philippines right now, politics is a very hot issue wherein there is a chaotic discussion between the supporters of Lenny and Bongbong Marcos. Why there is a chaotic uh, discussion? Because those uh, every supporter or every believer uh, have their own basis on selecting their presidential bets. Maybe it is because of the uh, that presidential uh, presidential candidates uh, credentials or past performances or on how well they handle the people when they are still a politician. So it is important for us to have the basis because they are the future of our country. They are the future leader of our country and they are going to lead us. So that is how also important in selecting a civil engineer for a certain project because you wouldn't compromise the lives of many just because of an be just because of a one incompetent civil engineer yes pare pareho tayo na civil engineer but we all differ from our qualifications so we should have the basis in selecting of it so our topic uh mm -hmm. so our topic encompasses Wait lang. So our topic encompasses the table of contents, which is the general, the basis for selections, the client selection committee, the qualifications based selections or the QBS procedure. So the number one, we have the general basis. So the selection and engagement of a civil engineer is one of the most important decisions to be made during the development of an engineering project. So the progress or the prosperity of a certain project of, or a certain assignment or a certain building, or it might be a residential or a commercial building, it depends upon how good the clients, how good the client is in selecting a civil engineer. So this, this section presents what experiences has shown to be the best and therefore the recommended procedure for the engagement of a civil engineer. So it is always important to actually hire and to select a suitable engineer for a certain project because the lives of many depends on it. So now we have here the basis for selection or the basis for selecting a civil engineer. So clients should establish administrative policy and criteria for the selection of qualified civil engineers for particular projects. So in selecting, you just you don't just select, collect, 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 and select. But you also have, uh, you must also have, it is also vital to have the criteria on selecting a certain thing. So bisan pa sa mga damit-damit na to, we Upon selecting, we always have the criteria. So, for example, for me, on selecting, you know, on selecting my clothes, I always look for a color of brown. So that is actually the criteria. That is actually a, an example of a criteria. I mean, so uh, in selecting, there is a lot of factors. Some of the factors that we should be uh, that should be considered and those are number one professional and ethical reputation so we should always select those civil engineers that is having the uh, the the attitude of professional and uh and having the moral and the ethical standards in their life that they followed with uh this professionalism and this ethical reputation would be uh would be you know would be known or makita siya could we could actually see it on their past clients on their past performances so makita ni siya ang ilahang 
professionalism and ethical reputation on how they handle their past clients. So, you know, mauna siya ang pinaka number one. This should actually be the number one consideration in choosing a civil engineer because without the professionalism, without the morals, without the ethical standards or reputation, in a certain civil engineers, then there will always be a bad outcome. It will only yield to a bad, bad project. So the number two responsible and must be a registered civil engineer. So of course, if handling a certain, uh, if, uh, if you are going, if you are the client, if you are going to hand it on a civil engineer, in a civil engineer, uh, the second thing you must think of after the ethical reputation is the responsibility. If that civil engineer is responsible if enough or if that civil engineer is registered. So, dili man nato i-hand on project na sa bisagkin sa lang, but we should always give it to the registered civil engineer. So, that is a common sense. So, in the number three, the next uh, factor is that they must demonstrate qualifications and expertise. So on how well they hand and on how well they would handle the certain project, the project from budget proposal, from the meeting the time allotted, and on how they deal with you as a clients, and on how well they perform, including their staffs and such. So that's how they demonstrate qualifications and expertise in a certain project. So in the number four, we have the presentations are tools that can be used as lectures. So in here, a civil engineer is responsible or they are responsible for choosing their civil engineer staffs. And those civil engineer staffs are going to handle the project and they are going to handle the project in, in a way that they are going to meet the time allotted. So that's how the presentations are tool that can be used as lectures. And number five should have the necessary financial and business resources. In the number five, so civil engineers should always have the necessary financial and business resources. Why? In order to actually finish the assignment and provide continuing services. So these factors is only applicable for the selection procedures described in this manual is for private projects only or in the private sector. So for government projects, projects or in the local government unit projects, the manual or the factories will be is listed on the executive order number 164. So on our next slide, we have the client's selection committee. So within the client's organization, there should be an established administrative policy. So in here, in other words, in every, you know, in every civil engineer for specific assignments, there must also be a specific selecting committee for that one or a person authorized to select or recommend selections of of civil engineer for specific assignments. So for example, I am that uh, authorized person to select a civil engineer. So I am going to select you as a civil engineer for this assignment. And the next one or the second one, I am going to assign you here. And I am and the next also one, the third one, I am going to uh, assign you here. So there must always be that, an, uh, there must always be that authorized person which selects civil engineer for their specific assignment. So one satisfactory procedure is to utilize a selection committee of three or more individuals. So in here, there must actually be people that would select not only one, because I believe na, na two heads is always better than one. So there should always be more than one committee that would select the civil engineer and one, one of those, one of whom is a professional engineer of the appropriate discipline. Because, you know, only those that uh, practice that certain profession would actually be the best judge for it. Except, for example, I am a teacher and there is a demo. So the best judge for that one in that demo is a teacher. So in here, in the selection of a civil engineer, the best judge for also, or the best committee 
the selection committee for that one is also a civil engineer, which is also performing the same discipline. So that's it. That's a common sense. So here in the, four, in the fourth one, the qualifications-based selection, which is the QBS procedure. So the selection procedure is considerably enhanced when the client is fully familiar with the purpose and nature of the proposed subject. It can be described the, uh, the subject in detail and can prepare a project scope and outline of services expected of the civil engineer. So here the client's usual step and selection procedures are presented below. So in the number one, this is the request or qualification or the proposal. So the first step, the first step, I mean, the first step that the client must do is to actually request for qualification or proposal. In this qualification or proposal, this is the job of a civil engineer to write back. I mean, to write back or to send back their resume or their proposal on how uh, on how well they will be performing or or how qualified they are as a civil engineer for that certain project. So here is the budget and the cost plan. The clients will prepare a budget proposal in a cost plan for the types, the, the stops, cost, and time. So evaluation of qualification statements. So after those two, after receiving the request for a qualification or request for proposal, the clients will now evaluate the qualification statement. So here in the evaluation of qualification statement from the hundreds of proposal, from hundreds of qualification, uh, the, you know, the selection committee should only choose at least uh, three civil engineers. Or there are also chances na ang mapipili nila or mapipili na selection committee is more than three. So there will be, you know, there will be chances for, there will be a lot of chances for the firms or the professionals to be involved with the negotiations and such. The interviews, the negotiations and such. So in the number four, writing of letter to selected engineers. So here, after the evaluating, after the evaluation of the qualification statement, of course, they have already chosen three engineers, at least three engineers. And those three engineers will be receiving a letter from the client to actually, uh, to actually have a meeting with them. Uh, written in the letter is the detailed, you know, is the detailed, detailed things about that civil engineer on how they are going to manage the project and such. So here in the write, writing of letter, uh, prior to this one is, I written also on this one that the selected civil engineers have the, are capable or I mean, have the chance to visit the site wherein the project are to be made. And the number five, fixing a meeting. So after writing a letter, they are going to fix a meeting. So uh, the meeting is usually done on the engineer's office, on the civil engineer's office, and they are going to discuss this and that, things and such. So after fixing a meeting for every engineer, for every selected engineers, it is now the time for the checking of engineers past project or firm and the background checking. So the purpose of this one is to actually prove the qualification of the uh, of that certain civil engineer. So uh, we can always uh, we can always say flowery words in an interview. We could actually fake the words, but we cannot actually fake the numbers. So the numbers will always says it all. That is why we must always uh, do background checking and the checking of engineers past project or firm and how well they handle their clients or how well they handle their past clients. So now after the background checking, this is now the developing a detailed scope. La, wait lang. Na end on slide. Developing a detailed scope.
So the detailed scope for this one is just only the available or they must deliver the schedules and the compensation. So developing a detailed scope, this is just, I mean, the inclusion for this one is just the schedule of the civil engineers and the compensation for the civil engineers. So the evaluation of the compensation proposed. So this is now where they are going to, where in the, after the discussion for the compensation, the clients will now evaluate the compensation proposed, the budget proposal and the cost estimate and all about the civil engineer. So after the evaluation of the compensation proposed or katumbayad bayad na, this is now after that, happens now the negotiations and the termination. So the negotiations and the termination, I, sorry guys, but sa, for more info here in the evaluation of the compensation proposed. So in evaluating the compensation proposed, there must also always be, it must always be confidential. So confidential, the, the, the discussion must always be confidential. Uh, what, what do we mean by that? So when the time that you are going to discuss the clients, the client is always responsible for this one. So the client and the discussion between the client and the civil engineer must always be confidential, especially ang compensation nila. So the compensation must not be, the compensation of the first engineer must not be discussed with the second engineer. So that's what we call as the confidential. So one one thing or one you know one function of professionalism is always being the confidentiality of things. So here after the evaluation of the compensation this is now the negotiation and the termination. So this is now where the negotiation between the clients and the civil engineers happens. So those three that are selected, there will always be the negotiation happens. If the negotiations don't click with one engineer and that there is no agreement, there is no agreement that happens and everything is just chaotic, then there will be a termination will happen. And there will be a termination happens on that certain negotiation. So mag-proceed na po siya sa isa ka-engineer na po. So ito na po gano'n po ng isa ka-negotiation and if and it must be agreed upon. If otherwise, termination again and so on and so forth. So after those uh, 10 steps or procedures happens, then there must always be the formalization of Agreement. So, if formalize na nila tenan from the by from the compensation, from the time, from the place where the uh, where the project are to be made, from the staffing, from the uh, cost, budgets, everything, they are going to formalize the agreement in here. So that ends my report on how. We are going on how the clients select the civil engineers on a certain uh, project or a certain assignments. So thank you everyone for listening. I hope you have learned something. And I hope if you are going to be the client soon, you are going to follow these steps in order to avoid a messy, uh, messy outcome or a bad outcome. So thank you everyone for listening and thank you for being with me. That ends my report.